Who among us hasn't heard this cliché? The universe is so vast, it would be egotistical of us to believe we're the only ones. Like so many time-worn beliefs, this one misses the point. The issue isn't whether life exists elsewhere, but rather, is that life visiting us? And if so, for what purpose? The assumption that UFOs merely represent extraterrestrial civilizations, people like us who just happen to live on other planets, may also be overly simplistic. The true picture of life in our universe may be far more complicated and more wondrous. They are describing phenomena that, and objects that appear very often out of nowhere, disappear on the spot, objects that are changing shapes, objects that merge together. If, if the technology or the phenomenon can do that, it, what that tells me is that it is manipulating time and space dimensions in ways that are beyond our science. And if they can do that, they can be from anywhere, anytime. They don't have to be from a particular planet in outer space. Harvard's John Mack agrees that the aliens may not be aliens at all. They may live among us in some sort of parallel world which we do not yet understand. All of those sources of information that tell us that the uh, universe is not the materially regular, well-ordered uh, machine that uh, we like to think it is and that uh, there are realms of reality that are far beyond what we can uh, touch and measure with our restricted empirical tools. For most scientists still rooted in the mindset of the 17th century, such concepts are preposterous. If something can't be physically measured, then it can't exist, meaning there are no souls, no human spirit, no God, no alien worlds. 747s are flying over the outback of Australia every day, and the Aborigines look up, and none of them have a piece of one, you know. Uh, but uh, they know that what they're seeing. These things are there, and uh, the evidence is, uh, is enormous. Proof is whatever it takes to convince us that something is true. On the subject of UFOs, there is more than enough evidence to prove that something really is going on. But none of it means anything to a person who simply refuses to take a fair look. UFOs have been around a long time. Millions of people over thousands of years have seen them. For centuries, they've been captured in carvings and drawings. Today, they're seen in photos, videos, films, and radar images. UFOs can and do affect our cars, planes, and other machinery. Thousands of landing site traces have been recorded. Soil has been baked, burned, irradiated. Mystical crop formations appear overnight all over the world with changes in the crop's genetic structure. Humans who encounter alien beings report being taken from their homes, probed, their memories altered, and they often carry away marks, scars, and other physical signs. Animals are being harvested by some unseen force and for some unknown purpose. Governments the world over possess secret files which declare flat out that UFOs are real and are here. If someone is simply unwilling to consider the possibility of other life forms, then none of this means much. But for the open-minded, there is evidence to pursue. I think that this is a solvable problem at this point. We are poised now to answer these fundamental questions. And after half a century of dealing with this subject, we are now in a position to actually solve this mystery. If this is some kind of an alien life form that is coming here and is doing this, why? Isn't it incumbent upon every one of us to try to understand more? to try to understand why, and perhaps to even ask for some kind of explanation from our own government about their silence. Those who choose to study the genesis of this phenomenon often pay a high price. Bud Hopkins' work cost him a marriage and his health. John Mack has faced scorn and ridicule from his colleagues. Brian O'Leary was ostracized by his former friends in the astronaut world. Linda Howe and others have been spied upon by government agents. Ted Oliphant had to quit his job as a police officer and left Alabama. The price can be high, but so can the rewards, as we grudgingly strive to understand a cosmos that is far more mysterious than we ever imagined. We're dealing with extraterrestrial beings, uh, we're dealing with interdimensional beings, we're dealing with phenomena that go in and out of our physical reality and are right in the fringes of our physical reality. Uh, we're dealing with a technology in which uh, 
let's say, mind uh, is supreme over matter. The animal mutilations are real. They happen. They're reported. Human abductions are happening. They're reported. We're sitting at a time, at a crossroads, as we're going into this next century, where I believe firmly that the next big story is going to be contact from something else out there.